What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanna to go over how to forge and craft in Last Epoch. For those that are new to the game or just coming over waiting for Diablo 4 to come out and that are just playing, kind of similar to me, I wanted to go over and teach you guys how the basics are to coming to forging and crafting inside of the game. So before we get into forging and how to do forging, we gotta ask what is forging and crafting? So just like other games like Diablo 3 or even in PoE, you have items that you can craft and manipulate to customize your gear how you want to a particular build that you're playing. So on each item, there's two prefixes and two suffixes for the gear. As you can see here, I have four items. And if we put these in here, you can see that we have levels of shadow cascade is a prefix same thing with chance to gain a dust shroud and then our suffixes are your health regeneration and poison resistance now each of these suffixes and prefixes are unique to just those as you can see a particular type some abilities can only be a suffix and some can only be a prefix so each side depending on how you want to manipulate your weapons gear off hands, relics, etc., is going to be determined by those items. So you have to be careful with that. So that's what forging and crafting is. It's going to help you build your entire character out exactly how you want it. And it just allows for such great customization. So now, how do we get to be able to forge? Well, first, let's look at the items that can be forged inside of Last Epoch. You have gray ones, which are also known as common, blue, which is uncommon yellow which is rare and then purple that's exalted this is a basics guide and this isn't going to be an advanced guide we'll talk about how to craft legendaries and use our uniques in another video but this is just going to be the basics so you're able to craft and forge these four different item types now as you can see here let's throw our gloves in here as you can see when you go to craft an item when you find it it has random generated stats this includes your upper effects like the plus 75 armor and 8% endurance. You have a forging potential. And then you have up to four prefixes and affixes that can be randomly assigned to each piece. As you can see that the exalted one has four slots. Our rare has four slots, but our uncommon only has two slots. So we can pick and choose whatever we want. And then in our uh, uncommon case, we have zero. Okay, so we can definitely add whatever we want. So you may get lucky and end up getting items with particular prefixes and suffixes that you need where you only have to add one and then you have some where you're gonna customize it completely. So the biggest thing when it comes to forging is that each item has what's called forging potential. Forging potential is what allows you to be able to forge or craft the suffixes and prefixes onto an item. You can add these, you can remove them, and you can change which ones these are all by forging. Now, everything that you do to crafting and forging an item takes away from its forging potential. Once your forging potential hits zero, the item can no longer be crafted. Just like this piece of boots that I have right here. There's zero forging potential. I can do absolutely nothing to this. The only thing I can do is destroy it. So keep that in mind. Now, when you are forging, for example, with 19, you can see that if I want to level up a, a uh, suffix or prefix, I'll use the blue one because this is better. So if I wanted to level one up, it would use an actual health suffix to increase the level from T2 to T3. Each item or each suffix and prefix can be maxed out at T5, which is the highest level, which would make the item a level 20 item. Now, when we get into exalted and unique items, you can get higher like you see here with T6 because it's a special uh, suffix or prefix that has been already applied, which is why you see the 58 physical resistance purple. So keep that in mind. But when you're leveling and forging one up, it can go no higher than five. That's it, that is the max. As you can see right here with the mana efficiency, I can no longer increase this, or I can increase the T3 vitality. Now with forging potential, if I was to increase 
And Chance, you see down here, I'll move my camera for you guys. You will see down here that it costs one to 18 forging potential for me to upgrade this from three to four. Now we only have 19. So if it used 18, we'd only have one forging potential left and we'd only have one more chance to do anything. Now this cost is between, so it could cost one, it could cost 18, or it could cost any number between those two. Okay, this also applies for when you're trying to re remove a uh, suffix as well. So if I wanted to use a rune to remove something, it would still cost a, an actual multiplier. Now this also applies when we're adding. So if I wanted to add one, let's say I wanted to add armor, it still costs one to 18 to add it. Okay, and again, once your forging potential is gone, that's it. So the forging potential is, you can see here, it's different between the different rarities. Uncommon has 15, the uh, common, or excuse me, uncommon has 15, the common has 16, and the rare has 19, and then the exalted has 44 potential. So the higher rarity item always has the most potential. Like it, it has a higher forging potential than, than its lessers. Now keep in mind that this can change. Forging potential between each of the rarities can change. So this exalted one could be 30. It could be 41. It could be 38. Same thing with the rarity. The rare could be 30 forging potential instead of 19. So it all depends on the drop and all of that is complete RNG. So you gotta hope that you luck out and get something to where you can make it your gear and just make it exactly how you want it. Okay, now that we have the forging potential, we've gone over that, we've gone over what forging is and crafting is. Now let's talk about these suffixes and prefixes. Okay, suffixes and prefixes are crafting items are crafting items or materials that you find from killing monsters. Whenever you find monsters, they have a chance to drop random suffixes and or prefixes, okay? You can stack these up. You see I have a dodge rating. I have 150 of these. So each time you use a, you go into the forge and you wanna upgrade something like health, I have 55 health here. It shows you how many you have of the item. Vitality, I have 117 of these. Each time you upgrade, it only uses one. It doesn't use any more, it uses one. So keep that in mind. Uh, the materials, the suffixes and prefixes, you can find them all over the place, depending on monster types, um, bosses, they drop whenever you're completing quests and turning stuff in. So you're gonna find these throughout the world just from playing the game. Now you may be asking yourself, what are these modifier runes and these support glyphs? Well, Modifier runes are runes that you can do to change how you craft and forge an item. As you just saw, we have Rune of Shattering, which destroys an item and gives us a random number of uh, affixes. There's also Rune of Refinement, which rerolls the value of all of these items within of their tiers. So, and then we have Rune of Removal, which removes one random affix. So it would remove it, and then you could put a brand new win, whichever one you wanted. Rune of Discovery, which Adams adds a random tier one affix to all empty slots. So for example, with this, I could take my uncommon, use the Rune of Discovery, and it would fit in four random affixes all at level one to this item, completely random. Whatever this item could have, it could randomly fill it in. So you see, we got stuff. This is another unusual way to be able to try to get something and as you can see it's no longer uncommon now it's rare because of the affixes that we have so it leveled it to level five okay and our in our forging potential stayed the same all right next we have rune of shaping it re-rolls an item on there and implicits the implicits are these things at the top so where it says spell damage mana minus spell mana cost, it can re-roll those, which can be really good depending on what you're doing. Next we have Rune of Ascendance. It changes any of these items into a unique item of the same type. This is a very good way to help power level your character at the end. 
Last but not least, probably one of the best runes is Rune of Creation, which duplicates the item but reduces the forging potential to zero. So, for example, if I wanted two of these weapons, I wanted two of them because this weapon's awesome. You know, I would come in here and use Rune of Creation, and it would make me two of these, but all 15 points of forging uh, potential would instantly go to zero on both items. Okay, so these are very rare to find, so make sure you hold on to them for specific items that you need. Okay, that is runes, but what about support glyphs? Support glyphs, as you can see, Glyph of Hope, modifies the outcome of a craft, granting a 25% chance to have no forging potential cost. Which means if I wanted to take this staff, I put in my Glyph of Hope and I want a critical strike chance damage for spell. It could cost one to 10 or the glyph is going to have its 25% chance kick in and it'll cost nothing and I'll keep all 15. So let's try. Boom, right there. You can see it. Glyph of Hope preserved forging potential. So it took my critical strike chance to level two and I spent no forging potential, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a one in four chance for this to happen, but this also allows you to upgrade things for free and make your weapons even more powerful. Next is Glyph of Chaos. It modifies the outcome of a craft when upgrading and randomly changes the affix to a different one that can spawn in that item type. So you could use this to like, you know what? I don't like stun chance. Let's upgrade and reroll. So it gave me shock on hit instead of stun, stun chance. My Glyph of Chaos used seven fortune potential. It took away 34% stun and gave me 23% shock. So I completely changed it, but now I only have eight potential left. All right, next is the Glyph of Order. It modifies the outcome of a craft when upgrading an affix, Pre prevents the roll of an affix within its range changing when it's upgraded. So if I wanted to do this, upgrade to 23%. So it'll show you what it's going to upgrade to, which is really, really cool. It prevents it from changing within the range when it's upgraded so we upgrade it we go to level two we spent four and now it's 23 percent. and now this will guarantee us to go to 30 percent. this is another way to get certain things high enough right it'll show you what it's going to go to but it costs us four potential the last one is this is the glyph of despair i don't have any but this is arguably one of the best glyphs because it'll allow you to seal in way a affix on an item. So I wanna make sure, I'm pretty sure I have one here just to show you guys, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yes, perfect. Okay, so in forging. So the Glyph of Despair will take one of your four affixes and seal it away like you see here. So it seals it away, which means it removes it from one of its, from its slot and now you can put in something else. Now, when you are doing this, the higher T it is or level, the harder or lower chance it has to be sealed away. I got lucky and it sealed away at T3, T1 being the easiest, T5 being the hardest to seal away. This also costs forging potential. Anything that you do forging and crafting costs forging potential. So that is the last glyph. Okay, it's a very, very powerful glyph. And it's also a very rare drop, similar to the Rune of Ascendance and the Rune of Creation, which is why their names are indifferent in yellow. They're a little bit different. All these other runes you can see, I have so many of those, where these two I don't have a lot of. So that is how you forge and use your runes, your glyphs, how you change any and all affixes. Uh, you can pick and choose which ones you want to add. You can level them up until your potential is gone. And this is how you're able to customize your character exactly how you want it, okay? Forging is a little bit complicated in the beginning, guys, but once you kind of understand and learn how it works, there's, you know, there, it's, it's very, very cool. It's a very sweet mechanic. It's actually one of my favorite things inside of uh, Last Epoch. It just makes it, so your character is customized the way you want it, which is by far my favorite thing. I think it's the best thing that you can do 
inside of a game is make your character your own no matter what kind of build that you are playing so guys like the video i hope this really does help you guys out uh comment down below what do you guys have any questions about forging and crafting what do you guys think about it in last epoch and make sure to sub to the channel we just hit over 8,000. thank you guys so much we're trying to get to 10k before diablo 4 releases so make sure to hit that sub button and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace